Right, so let's see here. We've got study the following diagram, which shows the following DNA profiles, okay, or a genetic fingerprint. People, you've got to remember another word for DNA profile is a genetic fingerprint, but a profile just sounds better. Fingerprint sort of... Mm, Although your fingerprints are unique, your profile is that no one can duplicate it. All right, so we've got the blood of a raped victim, female victim. That's actually shame. It's disgusting. And then we've got the blood of three suspects. And we have the semen found on the female victim. All right, what they've done here is they've, they're showing us the different bands. These are bands or DNA bands to be more precise. Okay, and this, this sort of colouring here will give you the, the, the profile. So, here's the semen, and we're going to take a ruler, and then you look across here, and, okay, so that equals to both of them, and this one is the same as the semen, and uh, this one, oh, look, I, you don't even have to do this, because this suspect here, and this semen here is identical. Okay, there, there is no questioning. I mean, look at this and look at this. It's identical. So, let's look at these questions now. What have we got? Which suspect was most like? Oh, no, it, it was number three. Okay, it was definitely number three. And why was it number three? The semen and blood sample from suspect 3 are, uh, um, sorry, sorry, the, the, the semen and blood sample from suspect 3 have the identical prof DNA profile. I mean, you could, could have written that in any way. You could have said the, the, the semen and the blood sample have an identical profile. Okay, well, as I said, the, the DNA profile is identical. Um, whatever you explained there, as long as you could say that this person and that semen, well, they belong to the same person. Okay, so give one reason why this evidence is considered reliable. Well, uh, it's a very, very easy thing, is that each individual has a unique, okay, it is unique, a not very unique, if something's unique, it's unique, it can't be very or most unique, it's unique, okay, so each individual has a unique DNA profile, all right, that, that's it, unless, of course, they have an identical twin. I mean, we've seen lots and lots of TV programs where you've got the evil twin that did everything, and the evil twin gets blamed, all right, but yeah, it, not in reality. Um, so unless you have a, an identical twin, nobody else has your DNA. Nobody. All right, give two reasons why this evidence may not be considered reliable. Okay, why? So we're looking at two reasons why it can't be considered reliable. All right, now, remember that first of all, there's only small amounts of samples available at crime scenes. Okay, so you'll have a little bit of blood, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, okay? Then you've also got a biggie, which is human error. And that human error can be in the collecting and or processing of the samples. So if people mess it up, um, if they don't wear the proper uh, clothing when they're collecting those samples, when they don't collect the samples and keep them in, in, in um, uh, 
properly marked containers, etc., etc. That's the collecting. And then you take it to the lab and then the people processing, they mix it up. Well, we then have a big problem. So human error is a big, big, big one. Okay. How did I spell human error here? My word. Let me just rewrite this nicely. Error. Okay. And then lastly, or that I can think of, is planting of false evidence. Okay. So that could happen at the lab. Somebody could swap things around. Um, it could be if I want somebody accused of, of something I did and I leave their, their hair and their whatever, um, blood, etc. at the crime scene and so that they can be blamed or not me. All right, so there, there are a lot of things that can happen. Okay, and then it says name two benefits of DNA profiling other than crime solving. People, you have to know this. Okay, so let's think. You've got paternity tests. Let's say there are three people that could be a father of a child. Okay, two of them have the same blood group, one doesn't. All blood tests tell you is which one is not the father. But the other two that have the same blood groups and, 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 and the blood, well, it could be either of them. How do you tell the difference? Your DNA testing. So paternity tests, I think this is probably a, a, one of the most popular ones. And then also to determine genetic disorders. Okay, so to check genetic disorders, um, okay, well, the obvious, they say two, but another one would be identifying or identify a dead body. Uh, let me think, um, there's one more. Research um, variation in a population. They're never going to ask you more than three anyway. But make sure that you learn one of them. All right, we're going to go to our next question. And this was a multi-choice, if I remember. Yes, it is. It's a multi-choice. And what have we got? The diagram A, all right, so this is the diagram, illustrates a single-stranded DNA. So the minute it's a single-stranded nucleic acid, sorry, DNA, single-stranded nucleic acid, DNA has a double strand. Do you remember my first joke, our first session we had on 5th of February? It was the double-stranded DNA asked the single-stranded RNA, are you still single? Okay, so that was our joke. It was a funny one, I think, and it was intended to help you remember these things. So the minute they tell you it's a single-stranded nucleic acid, we know that we're dealing with RNA. Okay, now RNA is going to have here going to have a phosphate iron it will have here a ribo sugar and here well the nitrogenous bases are all the same except for uracil and thymine okay so our options we know that x is a phosphate we know that y is a ribo sugar and rna has uracil so this is going to be c why because thymine is only found in dna Right now, wow, here we go. Um, question five, the DNA molecule has 200 guanine bases, which is 20% of the total bases, okay? Now, people, this is actually very, very easy to calculate. If 20% is equal to 200, what they want you to know is that each base is going to have a phosphate group. Calculate the total number of molecules. How many phosphate groups will there be? So 20% is 200. Okay, so I'm going to times that by 5 and I'm going to take it to 100% because that's what you're going to have on a DNA molecule. DNA molecule's got 100%. So I times that by 5, which means I must times 200 by 5. So that's going to be a thousand. And if there are a thousand bases, I therefore have a thousand phosphate ions or phosphate groups. Okay, so there we go. Easy as that. And it's not difficult maths. It's easy maths to do. All right. I don't want any of you to say, ah, difficult maths. No. If 20% is 200, 100% is going to be a thousand. 
Okay, last one here before we go to ad break. A gene in a bacterium codes for a protein with 120 amino acids. How many messenger RNA nucleotide codes for this protein? Now remember, we are going to always have three bases per codon. Okay, three bases per codon on the messenger RNA. Okay, and if we're going to have three bases per codon, those, that each codon, now you should know this, each codon is going to code for one amino acid. So, therefore, my calculation here is going to be 120 bases times 3 to make the code. I mean, 120 amino acids times the 3 bases is 360. And there is my answer. <laughs>